grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Welcome to Morning Prayer. My name is Tim Brumfield, Director of Music Ministries, Organist and Choir Master here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church of downtown Boca Raton, Florida. I come to you in the week after the Holy Trinity was celebrated this past Sunday. We are in proper six. If you would like to join me, I'm in the Book of Common Prayer on page 80. Once again, welcome to everyone. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is great God, a great king above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come. Let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to hear His voice. The Vanity. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 78, verses 1 through 79. I'm sorry, 1 through 39. It's found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 694. Hear my teaching, O my people, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable and will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works He has done. He gave us decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which He commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know and the unborn children might know that they in their turn might tell it to their children so that they might put trust in God and not forget the deeds of God but keep his commandments and not be like their forefathers a stubborn and rebellious generation a generation whose heart 
was not steadfast and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The people of Ephraim, armed with the bow, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks of the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliff and the waters gushed out like rivers. But they went on sinning against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They tested God in their hearts demanding food for their craving. They railed against God and said, Can God set a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock, the waters gushed out, and the gullies overflowed. But is he able to give bread or to provide meat for his people? When the Lord heard this, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob, and his anger mounted against Israel. For they had no faith in God, nor did they put their trust in his saving power. So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna for them to eat and gave them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He provided for them food enough. He caused the great wind to blow in the heavens and let out the south wind by his might. He rained down flesh upon them like dust and winged birds like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round about their dwellings. So they ate and they were filled, for he gave what they craved. But they did not stop their craving, though the food was still in their mouths. So God's anger mounted against them. He slew their strongest men and laid low the youth of Israel. In spite of all this, they kept on sinning and had no faith in his wonderful works. So he brought their days to an end like a breath, like a breath, and their years in sudden terror. Whenever he slew them, they would seek him and repent and diligently search for God. They would remember that God was their rock and the Most High God their Redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths and lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward him, and they were not faithful to his covenant. But he was so merciful that he forgave their sins and did not destroy them. Many times he held back his anger and did not permit his wrath to be roused. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that goes forth and does not return. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 1, verses 16 through 25. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith. As it is written, he who through faith is righteous shall live. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of men who by their wickedness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature, namely his eternal power and deity has been clearly perceived in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. For they became futile in their thinking and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, or birds, or animals, or reptiles. Therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 17, verses 22 through 27. As they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to the disciples, the Son of Man is to be de delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. And they were greatly distressed. When they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the half-shekel tax went up to Peter and said, does not your teacher pay the tax? He said, yes. And when he came home, Jesus spoke to him first saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toll or tribute? From their sons or from others? And when he said, from others, Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. However, not to give offense to them, go to the sea and cast a hook and take the first fish that comes up. And when you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. Take that and give it to them for me and for yourself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Lord Christ. O Lord and ruler of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
and for all their righteous offspring. You made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake and fear with your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to our sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned. And I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me, you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. A song of penitence. Let us now meditate on the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. 
and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide your feet, guide our feet into the way of peace. That having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, Rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now come to that time of offering our own prayers of thanksgivings and intercessions. We pray for all of those who are on our prayer lists. We pray for those who may be ill, either at home, in the hospital, in a rehab facility, in a nursing home, or for those who may be in hospice. We pray for all those who are worrying over the health of their loved one. For those who may be at the bedside of a family member. We pray for all those who have lost a loved one We pray for the grieving. We pray for the Ellis family. We pray for Olivia's family. We pray for Mike's family. We give thanks for all those who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries or some other milestone in their life today. We give thanks for this church, for the many ministries of St. Gregory's, for its staff, for its ministers, Father Sherman and his family, as they are on vacation. May they have a wonderful time and a restful time and return safely to us. We pray for Father Thomas and his family. May St. Gregory's continue to be a beacon of light and hope here in South Florida and throughout the world. We pray for peace. We pray for all those in Ukraine who are under the scourge of war. Keep them safe, dear Lord. We pray for this nation. We pray for an end to gun violence. We pray for all those who have suffered 
from gun violence all these many years. Most recently in Buffalo and Texas. We pray for this earth. May we do everything we can to stop climate change. May we care for our planet. We pray for this world and our leaders. May they make decisions out of love for all your people. And now, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Once again, welcome to Morning Prayer. My name is Tim Brumfield, Director of Music, Organist, and Choir Master here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church in beautiful downtown Boca Raton, Florida. It's a pleasure to welcome you in this first week after the Holy Trinity. We are in what's known liturgically as Proper Six Week as we are now in the season after Pentecost. I'm going to scroll down and see who's with me this morning. Actually, I'm on my page this morning. Hi, Jason, Holly, hey, Craig and Sarah. Let's see if I can switch over to my page and see if, um, see if I can do this easily. I don't know if I can or not. Let's see, here we go. Yep, there we are. And hey, Pat, Sharon, Peter, Madonna. Hi, Craig. Pray for Gail in the hospital. Craig, congratulations. 53 years today, um, your um, anniversary of your ordination. How wonderful. for Esther Lane and husband Roland. Hi, Laura. Wonderful, well, it's so wonderful to have everyone with me this morning, whether you're on my page or St. Gregory's. Congratulations to Father Craig on his ordination anniversary. Uh, I'm going to close this out with a final meditation. And since, it, since we are in the week of Trin Trinity, I'll close this out with something that uh, I began this, uh, today's service with, one of my favorite hymns. We only get to sing it uh, and hear it during the week of Trinity. So um, uh, I will leave you with holy, holy, holy. Thank you all so much. I'll close this out with a final blessing.
Once again, thank you so much for being with me this morning. I'll see you in the morning once again at 9 o'clock. I want to close this out with one of my favorite prayers, the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is discord, harmony. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.